This is my Arduino 101 Bluetooth tank chassis. In this video I'll show you how to assemble the chassis, wire everything up, put the Arduino on there, and then in the next video I'll show you how to program the Arduino sketch and build the remote control on your phone. So in this implementation I, I have a battery pack underneath here. It's a 5 AA battery pack. It gives me about 7 or 8 volts. Um, the AA's don't have enough current to run the motors and keep the voltage high enough on the Arduino. So when you're running it'll keep cutting out and the board will keep uh, rebooting on low voltage which isn't a very good thing so what I've chosen to do is I have a separate power source for the motors and then the Arduino is powered off of this 5 volt uh, USB battery pack now of course a slightly more professional way to do this would be to use a nice uh, 2 cell LiPo battery this will give you about 8 volts the problem is is if you you know you discharge one of these batteries too far it can explode into flames um, so it's nice to have a circuit to to prevent low voltage or you definitely need to be aware of it and charge the batteries and check the voltage one thing to note though if you're using a single power source you will want to put a choke on the wires coming from your motor driver these are both examples of chokes this is a split choke so you can put this on after the fact or if you have one of these little guys, you go ahead and wrap a few, as many uh, windings of the wire as you can, two or three times through here. And what this does is the motor can put off noise that you don't want to feed back into your electronics, and the choke will definitely dis will help dissipate that. So here are all the parts for my particular build. We have the Arduino Uno, which is the brains. It also has Bluetooth, so it can connect to our remote. We have some standoffs to mount the Arduino to this plate. Um, I have some M2.5 standoffs. You can use M3 standoffs as well. Plastic is kind of nice because you know for sure you won't short anything around, out, but metal will work. This is a motor shield. This is an Adafruit version 2. Um, we need something to be able to drive the motors on this uh, tank chassis. I'm using four, uh, four jumper pins. I think it's nice to have a polarized power plug. I have one on order but it didn't get here in time so I made one. And this way um, we can connect this to power and then unplug and plug. And So as an update I bought these JST connectors I bought about 10 of them for oh, 7 bucks or so. So they're pretty cheap and they're polarized so you can for sure make sure there's no way to blow up your board by putting it in reverse. 5 AA batteries for the motor battery pack. And then of course we've got the uh, chassis here. Uh, some zip ties, a little bit of heat shrink tubing if you, wanna, if you want. Um, and this is a USB uh, battery pack. It's got a single lithium battery in here powering it. But it can put out 5 volts for our Arduino. And then of course a short USB cable. So this is get what you get with this uh, Dagu multi-chassis kit here. This is a, the, the tank, tank chassis version. Um, comes with a little uh, battery pack. Go ahead and put the wheels on. There's bearings on there and attach the motors. The motors just have a red and black wire coming off of them. This uh, AA battery pack is kind of tight, so when you put the batteries in, go ahead and kind of push them a little bit. Make sure they're making good connection. I like putting it in here. It just kind of is a nice place to put it. But, uh, of course... Keep in mind that means you're going to have to take these uh, screws off to uh, get to these batteries. So before we uh, put the top on the tank, 
Um, it's good to put the standoffs on the Arduino board. Due to the hole placement on the Arduino board, there's actually surprisingly only a couple ways this board goes on there well. <clears throat> the one I like, notice that these two holes are close together. They go right here. So I'm going to put this here. This is a pretty good place for it. The power connector <clears throat> on your shield is going to be facing out this way so it's not going to be hitting the track. I'm going to snug these up on top first. And I'm going to go ahead and get these snug down here. And of course the motor shield goes right on here. Okay, so identify the pairs of wires for the motors. Go ahead and use these jumpers here. Alright, there's a little M1 and M2 for motor 1 and motor 2. It doesn't necessarily matter which way you put these in here. Um, if the motors turn the wrong direction, you can always swap them around. So... I'm just going to kind of uh, push these wires back underneath here to kind of get them out of the way. Tidy this up a little bit. Now we can get a closer look at the, the jumpers I made. I didn't feel like cutting it off. I'm going to just preserve the chassis for future use. Who knows? Now we have the other end that plugs into here. So as an update, I bought these JST connectors. Connect this guy up. <clears throat> so I forgot the zip ties for my other power supply. Be sure to leave these kind of loose because you don't want to fight them too much when you're, if you want to take the, the battery pack out. And we can power up the motors. Now that we have everything assembled, uh, in the next video I'm going to go over loading the Arduino with software and also building the remote control on your phone.